Sometimes all somebody needs is a second chance. Yeah. Making a movie, it's a bit like a little incarnation, a little lifetime unto itself. You know, you get very close with people. And it was a wonderful experience. He just needs to learn how to be a horse again. All these actors, all these crew people, they're here for one purpose, to make a good film. Kind of small, isn't he? Gonna look a lot smaller in a second, Georgie. It's unbelievable. I go to work and I go, wow, I hope I'm not the weak link here because everybody else is doing such a fine job. His horse couldn't win a church raffle, let alone a $2,000 allowance. <laughs> there was a thrill to telling a massive period story with a massive number of people over huge locations all across America. He is a great horse. We don't know that yet. Though he be but little, he is fierce. Just try to feel it. He'll tell you when he's ready. And away they go. That was sent the article that Laura wrote called Four Good Legs Between Us, uh, which was written for American Heritage Magazine. And along with that came a book proposal, and I was knocked out by it. Not so much just the racing, but the unbelievable detail and color that she brought to the era and how she wrote about the era and those times. I thought I had a great story to tell. I thought this had a beautiful cinematic arc to it, that it was, it was really an amazing story that was worth hearing. But I thought people wouldn't give it a chance because it's about a racehorse. The book provided an enormous amount of detail and background that the article did not have, but Laura herself is the biggest resource. And her apartment or house in Washington is filled with boxes and boxes and boxes of material, and she just knows so much about it. When you adapt the book, what you're really being faithful to is the intentions and the spirit of the book. And that's the thing I wanted to make sure that I was honoring. There's no way to tell the story exactly the way you do in the book. It's a 400-page book. There's a lot that needs to happen to craft this into a movie that's a watchable length. And right away when I started reading it, I was just filled with rapture. It, it, it's so lyrical and beautiful. And he has taken what is a wonderful story and he has infused it with his creativity. Everybody. We had to decide, okay, how many sea biscuits do we need? So we came up with needing five sea biscuits to run, so we would always have a fresh sea biscuit because sea biscuit was in every race, obviously. And then we had five sort of special interest sea biscuits: one who could sleep, one who could be feisty. So there's really a total of ten sea biscuits on the whole movie. Attention, guys, concentrate. Right, get ready, Corey. Get ready to ride. Filming horse racing is different than filming traditional movie horses in westerns or another kind of scene. Not to say that that isn't also difficult, but in, with race horses, they're that much more highly strung. They're thoroughbreds. These are bred to be competitive and fast. Neither of which you really want. <laughs> we wanted some horses that look really great and go maybe a little bit slower. All of this thinking could not have happened without Chris McCarron. Chris McCarron, who's also one of the best-known jockeys today, he was instrumental in helping us define what our approach to the movie would be technically with regard to the horses. In the beginning, my responsibilities were such that I would sit in on the race design meetings with Gary and Rusty the Wrangler and Dan Bradley, the stunt coordinator, and we would put together on paper what Gary's ideas were. From those notes on the paper, a plan of playbooks was developed, and we've used these playbooks throughout the racing scenes. We've got like a 400-page shot list, and I will tell you what, we have pretty much stuck to it. Gary and I spent about two months every day for 12 hours a day visualizing this movie, and it's been working out great. Wow. I want a maroon. They only had bright red. Oh, it looks great. In a movie like this, what the movie looks like has as much, if not more, to do with costume design and production design. Because you're looking at the people, and they establish so much of what that era is. This is one of the largest films I've ever done with the amount of extras we have to dress every day. 
We do go to costume houses all over America, England, and Italy. I would say we have almost 38 rental houses from across the world. Our Howard silks, which is what Toby wears, are accurate. They are copied from the Howard silks. It would look really silly, me showing up in my sweats and t-shirt uh, and acting the scenes out. The wardrobe supports my performance, not only visually for someone who's watching it, but internally wow. for me. It helps me fit into the role better and, and feel it and feel like I'm in the situation. Well, we can always spread it around if we have to. Janine's job is very difficult here because it's taking existing locations and dressing them up in a period of way. Some of it's done CG, some of it's done practically, but she has to try to make real places work. She's not building from the ground up. I've done a lot of period movies, some in the 30s, some during the Depression, some in the 40s. There's lots of stuff left to be found and to be fixed. But then you have to go there and you have to make huge long lists of what has to be fixed and altered. And then whatever you cannot find, then you have to negotiate over what wants to be built. The sets that Janine Oppelwald created for this film were just so inspiring, you know, to go into Charles Howard's ranch at Ridgewood in this magnificent room that she created where we have a big party scene. It's so great. The detail is uh, just remarkable. And you look at that, it makes you feel that you really live in that place. The scope of the story is enormous, and that alone is a challenge. The more specific challenge, though, is how do you tell these horse races in a way that is faithful to what Laura did? Because what Laura did in the book is she made people understand this isn't the race you're used to seeing from way up here in the grandstand, and you just see these little horses running around the track. If you really got it in there, it's rough, it's violent, it's exciting, it's dangerous. You've got to be able to get inside that so that all the nuances, the acting, the emotional drama, the complexities, all those things play. So I had to be able to get down there and shoot the real thing. Son of a bitch! One of the things I realized is I'm going to have to be able to film Toby seeming to be on a racehorse, interacting with the jockeys around him, often having dialogue. All those things require an intimacy. I have to get the camera here. I asked Michael Lantieri to see if he could commission a vehicle for me. Uh, basically a flatbed camera platform that could move around the track so I could put Toby in the context of other horses around him as well as the grandstand, the world whizzing by, and really put him in the environment. These are two equisizers. I took them all apart, rebuilt the frames, put motors on them, and sculpted thoroughbred heads to put on them so we could have lifelike horses that would go down a track. It has all the controls for every aspect of the horses. It can run the horses forwards and backwards, put them together for a bump or an inquiry, make their heads change speed. I was dying to do that all week. We put the entire crew on here and go for the ride, and because it's built like an aircraft carrier, we call it the SSC biscuit. Oops, there's my hole. Gotta go. Ah! Every race that we run is a race that's in the history books. The form of each one of those races is, is written down. So it's very important that we have these scenes choreographed as close as we can to the original race. The arm will be overhead. I had horse rehearsals for a week before we ever actually started shooting because I wanted to know that it's the best method of working. Ricky, you're five in front, Ricky. Without horses, the guys in the camera car would all pretend to do what they were doing, and the jockeys would run along the ground as if they were on horseback. Everybody knew where they were supposed to be relative to all the other pieces, and it's the thing that made it safe. And maybe one of the things I'm most proud of is that there was not an accident on our movie. And I think one of the reasons is that we rehearsed it so well. Every now and then I get involved in a movie where I have a certain idea from a technology standpoint of what it is we're trying to accomplish. But when I get into a cutting room and I see a sequence cut together and it goes way beyond what my imagination was telling me the experience was going to be like, that's very rare. Editing to me is almost like the writing process in a way. You're there, you muse, you try things, you try other things, you sort of digest it. Gary and I have, have had so many discussions 
you know, from the basically from the beginning of the script writing process up until the time the scene is shot, that all that is in my head when I'm cutting anyway. And let's steal these guys and, and pack the real fight. Billy and I have such a tight relationship. We're very good friends in addition to working together. It's one of the few things where I don't feel like the director and he's the editor. It's like we're, we, I feel very much like we're colleagues. I would say the day of the match race is one of the defining scenes in the movie in terms of style and also in terms of excitement. You know, really what the movie's all about. You're following this race from the time you learn that War Admiral is this arch enemy, basically, of Seabiscuit, and then it's such a sort of wild journey to get there. I get that there's so much emotion wrapped up in the race, and it's really classically cut because I want those pieces to play longer. Because I don't want it to be incredibly chopped up like modern movies are cut and feeling like it's out of place in, within the period of the film. People who watch that particular scene, a lot of times are brought to tears, and, and I think that's just a credit to everybody, from the costumer to the director to the DP to everybody, and it all just came together and it really, I think, defines what, what the movie is. This is a story about people more than it is a horse story. I felt the entire time that I've been working on this story that these people were looking over my shoulder and, and wanting me to get it right. And I felt when I saw the movie that they were looking over Gary's shoulder too and informing him along the way. I always enjoy working with directors who have written the material because they're so steeped in the material. They have really done a lot of work on all the characters and their wealth of information. They you know, have it right, right there at their fingertips. Come on, boy. It's funny because Gary Ross knows me so well. He wrote this with me in mind and, and he knew this would appeal to me because I love all the jobs I've had in my past and wouldn't have done them unless I felt really passionate about it. But I was definitely looking for something that had some different elements to it and this was just a perfect opportunity for me. It's great, I've been very fortunate. Everybody that's working on this wanted to work desperately on this film from the beginning and from the first day. Gary has set the pace with his enthusiasm and it's been wonderful like every day. How you doing, Red? Georgie? I've loved working with Jeff and Toby and Elizabeth. I hope we've helped inspire each other to go the extra mile in this. Have a nice ride, Johnny. Come on, Fox. It's the closest thing I've had to what was in my head ever. There were so many moments when I would see Toby and Chris Cooper interact or Toby and Jeff interact or I would find a moment that was that resonant and I just felt satisfied. I'd gotten every piece that I was looking for. Come on, Rod! I'm not always going to get a canvas this big to tell this emotional story with this many things that I love. I love the era, I love the heroism of the era, I love the sacrifice, I love the spirit. You don't always get a chance to tell this kind of a story. I knew I was lucky every day. You know, thank God this book was a bestseller because it allowed us to make this movie this way. And that was thrilling to me. throw a whole life away because it's, it's banged up a little bit. What do you think, boy? You ready to go?